I can't tell you how many times on my website that I have written that I think alpha rolls are a dangerous, foolish thing to try and do with your dog. It's drop-dead dangerous. In this short video, you will listen to Michael Ellis talk about alpha rolls. And even though you can watch a TV show, and a very popular TV show, where the trainer uses alpha rolls, it's crazy to try and do this on your dog. A lot of um, handling drills with puppies to teach them to be comfortable being handled. So I make them let me hold their feet and look at their teeth and things like that. So I, I handle them a lot. I do that with a combination of saying, like, you have to let me do this and I'm giving you rewards. I shape that as well. So I'll hold my puppy's foot and say, yes, and give him a piece of food. Hold their other foot, yes, give him a piece of food. Hold their head. But, um, and then I do things where I may, like, I'll grab their muzzle and hold them and make them let me hold them still. If they fight me, I go, uh-uh. They stop, yes, and I immediately release them and go. But the flipping them over is bad, bad news, right? So the whole alpha roll thing is a terrible, dangerous thing to do, right? How do you correct them? You say really... oh, with, an, with an older dog? Yeah, it's a, like I, it depends completely on the dog and my experience and what's happened and what's handy. If I kick them, I punch them, I break a stick over their head, <laughs> like whatever, right? <laughs> no, no, you put your hands on them and you're asking to get bit for sure. Like if you're rolling your dog over, trying to flip your dog, there's two things that happen there is, some dogs you're okay, some dogs will be just fine. But many dogs um, go from, not from uh, you think, hey, I'm showing my dog they have to submit to me, to a uh, panic self-defense mode, right? Because it's way overdoing it. It's not like just asking them to submit to you, it's asking them to go on their back and totally give up, like they're, I'm dead, right? And you're like asking for complete submission. So when you do that to dogs, Lots of dogs panic. And now it's not a question of them trying to assert themselves over you. It's a question of them thinking, I'm dying. Self, then they go into self-defense mode. Like, this person's going to kill me. I have no choice. And lots of animals, when pushed to the point where they don't think they have any other escape, will fight back because they just don't think they have anything else. They're, all the, their possibilities are um, exhausted. If that dog had a chance and you weren't holding it down, it probably would run from you. But now it can't run, you've got a hold of it, you're flipping it over like you're going to kill it, and you're pinning it down, and now the dog goes, okay, I, I have to fight back. And then they react, they panic, they bite you, right? And when you're down over the top of them with your hands on them, you run a big risk of getting bit. And, if, uh, and so to me it's unsafe, and you frequently stress your dog out way more than it's necessary. Like way more than it's necessary. You can assert yourself over a dog without having to flip them over and hold them down, right? That said, my dog should also tolerate handling, right? So as opposed to like me pinning a dog down as a correction, my dog should allow me to lay him down and touch him and look at his stomach and look at his feet. And I, so I'm going to do things with puppies from the time they're little to get them comfortable with all those handling things. So in case I need to handle them during injury or trim their nails or do those things, I want to encourage that stuff. Uh, but be careful about alpha rolling as a, as a correction technique. Yeah, it's, it can backfire on you really badly. Um, and you can take a dog that was maybe being a little uppity and make them super scared of you and undermine your relationship that way. Or you can take a dog and panic them and make them attack you and fight back. And, uh, and that can go, can go seriously wrong. So I hate it as a, as a, as a general technique. No, no, like, what, no. So in the, in the moment, what happens is that's over, right? So if you do something like that, then it's done, right? It's not like I'm pinning you down, killing you. I don't keep coming at you. I'm not asking you to totally give up and say, look, I'm dead. Look, there's my belly. Kill, kill me if you need to, right? It's just like, it's like a leash correction or something. It's bang, it's over, right? If I have a leash on or if I have something else or I can grab the dog by the tail and thump them in the nose, whatever, it just depends on the dog, right? I can, some dogs I can just go, hey, knock it off and jab them with my fingers and they'll go, oh shit, sorry, right? It just depends completely on the dog's sensitivity level, right? And how far into the kind of thing is. But if I don't have something to, 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 to with my hands on them, then smacking the dog or doing something like that is fast and over, right? So it was aversive. You said, don't, knock that off right now, but it's over now. It's immediately over. So as soon as, assuming they stop, it's done. Okay, let's go do something else. But the other one just goes on and on and on, right? You're asking the dog to totally give up to you in, in every way. And so 
That's yeah. that that can. Yeah, you can. You got to be super careful. You absolutely could hurt them. You could kick them and like it's not good. Like it was, I'm not saying like, hey, you want to, but there's a spot where okay, my dog's about to get in a dog fight. It's about to kill somebody else's dog. If they don't stop when I say stop, whether you're hurt or not, then you're, you're, you're going to get put down or whatever, right? So the whole idea is like, if I if there comes a point where it doesn't matter, you do whatever you have to do to make it stop, right? Um, most of the time, you don't have to resort to that, right? So if I've done been rearing my dog and kind of doing my thing as we go along, then my dog will stop just based on our relationship and training by the time they're older. So if I have one of my adult dogs, it's not I don't usually have to wade in and have a big knockdown drag out. They listen to you now because you've kind of subtly asserted yourself over them the whole way along. You've shown them a lot of other stuff, so they're responsive. So like I start with my little puppies, teaching them not to pick stuff up. Like so I take my puppy out and my puppy's hiking and it wants to go eat deer poop. So when it does, I go yuck and I grab them and pinch the snot out of them. I go, yuck, pinch. They go, ah! And they spin around and I go, come on! We run the other way. But it was really fast and it was over. It was just like, yep, oh, there we go. And they go, ah! Hey, here we go. We go food. We go do something else, right? So then I can just condition it. So if I go, hey, ah, yuck, or whatever, they go, oh, sorry, what, what? I wasn't doing anything. But I didn't have to, I didn't have to beat them or kick them or anything like that usually. It's just kind of a quick, like, interrupt that, make it unpleasant, we're doing something else. But every once in a while, you get a puppy that's super, like, every, I had a Malinois. He's about two now, uh, awesome dog. Uh, but as a puppy, he was super, super dedicated to biting you. Like, not a little bit, like he would just bite you and sink in blood everywhere kind of thing. At three months old, he would just, and if you weren't looking, he would just kind of come flying across the yard and just bite the shit out of you as hard as he could, right? So just really, really, really hard. And most of the time with puppies, they're biting you and you stop, you poke them, redirect, I do stuff like that. But like him, very difficult to redirect and really, really, really committed to biting you. So he got corrected really hard. So he bit me once and I went, no, wham, and just smacked him across the face. And he went, and so I tell people, don't do that to your puppy. Like 99% of the puppies out there, you do that too, and the puppy will never touch you again, won't want anything to do with you, he won't come near you, you might cause yourself all kinds of problems. But for him, it was perfect. He was just like, that's just what I needed, right? He's like, oh, okay, why didn't you say so? He was fine afterwards, he stopped biting me, and everything else was perfect, right? He was great, he was awesome to work with in every other way, but like, he was hitting a stop, you're like, you can't keep doing that, dude, like, that's crazy. You get big holes in your leg and stuff like that from him biting you. So, like, that's one of those things that's just, if I had to plan it, I wouldn't plan it that way. I wouldn't say, like, okay, we're going to set up something. But, like, it's one of those things where life happens, you know? And sometimes you find yourself in situations where you really don't have much of a choice but to get the thing to stop. And so sometimes we do things to stop them that we would rather not do if we had all this time to plan that event out, that we would find some other way of doing it. Right? But one of the things that I think is important is that... Um, you be able to, um, with, with your dogs as they get older, be able to um, stop, have kind of an emergency stop thing, right? Where I can just basically say, stop doing that and you'll stop whatever it is, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It just becomes a question of safety in certain circumstances. You know, the dogs are going to jump in traffic. Our Learberg website has close to 300 free streaming videos. If you're new to our newsletter, you may want to visit the library of these videos. We also have a large selection of dog training DVDs.